What's up everybody? This is the eBay Sorcerer back again with another video. This time I'm sourcing at a thrift store that's a little closer to my house. The prices are really good on clothing and books. The first item I come across is a Jurassic Park or Jurassic World to be more precise, T-Rex dinosaur. It's the roaring and stomping one. It sells for $21.95. It cost me $2. I thought this was a pretty good buy. This is, this looks like a cabbage patch. You're beautiful. I mosey around for a while looking at some of the collectibles, but nothing really struck my eye and nothing was really well priced. Trophies are a good seller on eBay, believe it or not. This one wasn't great, but they do sell well. Again, I looked around for a while. I came across a Pampered Chef stainless steel apple core. I didn't really know what it was at first. I thought maybe it was some kind of tool. Like I said in the previous video, Pampered Chef is a really collectible brand. It sells for $31.95. It cost me $6. Not a great turnaround, but worth picking up. I tried my best to make sure everything was where it was supposed to be, that all the parts worked. One thing you should know about reselling is that it's very important to know which thrift stores are good for what. Not all thrift stores price the same. This store, for instance, prices their collectibles a little on the high side. Not a lot of room for me to make money. If something's not priced well, it's best to just pass it up. I always check out the books when I'm here because they're not one for a dollar, not two for a dollar, but three for a dollar. At that price, you can pretty much take any chances you want and buy something just to see what it's worth. Like this book right here, The Hope We Seek. I figured since it was brand new and sealed, it had to be worth good money. Unfortunately, the cheapest one on eBay I could find was already brand new at $4.09, with 148 listed on eBay, and literally none sold. This is definitely a flip-flop. Then I noticed some cookbooks. The first one was called Recipes from Near and Far. I couldn't find any sold, but I did find one on sale on eBay for $13. So I decided to list it for 12. And if either sell, it should be mine. Who doesn't have a bread machine that they need the cookbook for? This was a lot of two vintage bread machine cookbooks, number one and number two by Donna Rathmel German, who sounds like someone who would cook with a bread machine. They sell for a little over $4 each, so I figured I could probably sell them both for $8. Ah, oh, she looks like someone who would cook bread in a machine. When you're looking through books, it's not a bad idea to grab the ones that might be about or written by someone who's local. The chances of it being signed are much higher. This one wasn't signed, but I've come across lots of books that were, so I was really glad I checked. Next, I come across a book from 1984 called The Apparitions of Our Lady at Medjugorje by... Uh... Veteza Kroljevic. Yep, that's it. It sells for about $19.95, so this was definitely a good buy. Older religious books in general are pretty hard to find, so that usually means they're worth something. Scientific research books as well. This book was called Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills. Mmm. This college course textbook from 1996 sells for $8.95. One of the reasons I like to buy books is because the shipping rate is cheaper using media mail. Now, will you look at that? Maybe I should just write a book. A book like this would be good for somebody who really doesn't know what they're doing on eBay, but since I've been doing this for a while, I passed on it. These kinds of niche books are usually good pickups. This modern fencing comprehensive manual by Clovis Della Dreyer? Della Dreyer? Della 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 Dreyer? Della Dreyer? I give up. Who knows? Sells for $14.95 and it cost me 33 cents. This was a cookbook I was on the fence about. Cookbooks like this sometimes sell, but usually I end up lotting them up together, like this listing here, which is one of my listings. A heavy one like this kind of takes up too much room in a box especially for only $3 a book. 
You can see I was really torn on this one. Should I buy it or let it go now? Y'all, I swear, if you're ever in a thrift store and you hear someone whistling or singing along with the radio, it's probably me. Now, the thing I love most about this thrift store is the dollar rack. They have so much clothes for a dollar a piece. So I make my way over to the dollar section. When I come across something that has embellishments like rhinestones, I almost always pass on it. I've bought jeans before that were missing rhinestones or they fall off while I'm trying to list it. Plus, who even wears jeans like that now? They usually have a lot of shoes and they're always worth checking. These slippers were in really good condition and everything looked like it was good. The brand on these is called Deer foams. They have a hard sole on the bottom so you can wear them indoors or outdoors. It'll sell for around $19.95 and it cost me a dollar. I really wish they wouldn't draw these big golden stars on the bottoms, but I guess that's what they have to do to signify that they're only a dollar. As I go through more clothes, you'll notice I inspect very carefully. I almost never buy anything white because even the smallest discoloration really, really just stands out. You also wanna be really careful about pilling. Pilling are those small little balls or fluff on the surface of fabric. It generally means something's been worn a lot. They do make tools that can remove it, but I'll leave that for somebody else. Evening gowns do pretty well on eBay, especially brands like this, which was Express, because people are familiar with the sizing of that particular brand. They're usually only worn once, maybe twice. I'm sorry, ladies, but I do have to check for armpit stains. This one had a big stain on the bottom, so I had to pass on it. This dress was in really good condition. It's made by White House Black Market. I try to buy clothing that's not only a common brand, but also not fitted. I feel like somebody's more likely to buy a dress if it has a little wiggle room in the fit. This dress sells for $15. And most dresses are pretty lightweight, so they'll ship first class, which is a lot cheaper than shipping at priority. Which is a good point. Shipping costs should always be considered when you're debating on whether or not you should buy something. This was the first item that came across that was still new with tags. This is an unbranded dress. It's the kind of dress that's made wholesale and sold to different stores that then sell them. Think like boutique posh store. But I figured just throw it up on eBay for $19.95 and see what happens. Here's something that was a lot easier to find online. This is an Ann Taylor Loft Blue Florum Bustier romper with spaghetti straps. It was linen blend and sells for $19.95. This is kind of a 90s grunge look in my opinion, which is pretty big right now. Again, it's really important with clothes to check for holes and that all the pieces and parts are in working condition. Speaking of 90s, here we have a vintage Trend Basics blue sleeveless cottagecore dress. Cottagecore is an aesthetic that celebrates simple living, particularly in the countryside. Now the pattern on here is not particularly cottagecore. It's more of a geometric design, I guess. And actually, I stand corrected. This is from the 80s. I've seen lots of dresses like this that are really long, 
maxi dresses listed as modest. So I could have gone that route as well. Hey, where's this tennis racket coming from? So a buddy of mine that shops at this store is always finding these weird things and giving them to me, saying that I should sell them. It doesn't hurt to have a second set of eyes, does it? He was telling me all about the guy whose picture was on the tennis racket. Some guy named Pancho Gonzalez. It was $3, but it was worth it as it sells for $30. The only thing is that the shipping cost is going to be a little high because it was over a pound and it's quite long. Now, back to clothes. Gap is a brand that does really well on eBay. It's a super common brand, so sizing shouldn't be an issue. And the retail price on stuff like this is usually pretty high. I couldn't find any sold, but I did find two for sale on eBay. One of them happened to still have the price tag on there, which was $59.95, which gives me a really good idea of how much I should be listing it for. I have a really complicated system. I multiply the retail price by 0.55, which gives me the price of what I'd sell it for new with tags. Then I multiply that by 0.55, gives me the price I'd like to sell it at. Both the other sellers had it listed a little too high in my opinion, which might explain why they haven't sold. Or it could be that no one in that size wants that outfit. Or even worse, no one wants it at all. Which does pose a problem. And trust me, it does happen. Honestly, I don't think that's the issue with this outfit though. Skirts do great on eBay. I think partially because they only need to fit in the waist. This one is an Ann Taylor. Again, a brand that people know the sizing on. Plus, solid color ones are great, since they're easier to match clothing with. But one thing I hate is when the thrift store punches a tag through the fabric, creating a big hole. That hole doesn't just go away. And like stains, I don't buy anything with a hole in it. This black velvet skirt was interesting. I couldn't find a tag on it. And I noticed how absolutely tiny the waist was on it. Yeah, it could have been a kid size, but it was really long. Both the hooks and the zipper looked to be sewn on by hand. So I think this was a homemade skirt. I don't usually buy homemade clothing unless the fabric itself has value. I thought this skirt was pretty cute, but something about it made me think that this would be really hard to match up to a blouse. So I passed on it. I thought this shirt was really interesting as well, but it had some serious threading issues along the bottom. Izod sweater vests like these do well, but this one was way too worn out. I came across this red polo. It was brand new with tags. The brand was Champro, which I had never heard of. Turns out it's a umpire polo and they sell really well on eBay for $25 each. And they had like five of them and I passed on them. So yeah, I'm not perfect. And here's another one like that pom-pom dress. That's kind of like one of those things you might see on Amazon or at a boutique store. The brand is Qualfort, which I had never heard of before. Qualfort, I guess that's like, or Qualfort, like quality, affordable clothing. I think it's pretty much just somebody's name on Amazon. They sell them for $29.99, so I'll just undercut them by five bucks and sell it for $24.95. Sometimes things like this can be a good pickup, but often it's not. The Washington Nationals are not a national brand, pun intended. How many people really wanna wear a years old pennant championship hoodie? My guess is not many, but you know what people do want? Under Armour hoodies. This one was in really good condition. I could sell it for $19.95. I'm pretty sure this one will sell quick and I'll have a nice turnaround.
Sometimes when I'm out shopping, I happen to come across something that I in particular like. I couldn't believe that these were a dollar, these Ralph Lauren polo shorts. They were in great condition, and I love that color coral. These shorts were really interesting. They were made by Creekwood. They're big and tall size, which are hard to find. These were size 44. And though not my style, someone out there probably appreciates them. I could tell these were really well made. And then I found another pair of shorts that I really liked. This was my lucky day. Which reminds me, if you've gotten this far into the video and you haven't hit that like button, take a second to hit like. It helps feed the algorithm. And you know how hungry that algorithm gets. These shorts were Tommy Bahama, which sell really well on eBay. Even pre-owned, these shorts can sell for $29.95. Make sure the zipper works and that the buttons are there or you'll be sorry. These shorts are Torrid brand, which also sell well on eBay. These were brand new with tags and had absolutely nothing wrong with them. I don't know if it's because summer is coming to an end or what, but there were a lot of shorts on the dollar rack today. I can get $29.95 for these shorts. Land's End is another brand that does well. And I would have picked up these shorts had it not been for this stain on the back. Here's a polo I had never seen before. It was made by Trojan Records. After doing some research, I realized that they all came from the UK and anything shipped overseas is going to cost more. I found this one on eBay that sold for $18.95. When I see something that's sold on bidding, I know I can almost always get a little more than it actually went for on the bid. So I'm listing these for $19.95. I don't think that'll be a problem. I actually put the shirt back for a second. I forgot about that. I use my phone to video myself doing these shopping experiences. So if I'm unfamiliar with a brand, I can't look it up while I'm actually shopping. All right, everybody. Well, that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed shopping my favorite thrift store with me. All in all, my total listings are $425 minus $121 for shipping, $51 for fees, and $20 on the cost for a grand total of $233 in profit. Not bad. Once again, I'm the eBay Sorcerer. Thanks again for spending a little time with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If there's anything I passed up that you think I should have purchased, let me know. And while you're out shopping, may the source be with you. So I'll just undercut them by five bucks and sell it for 20 dollars